traveling with anxiety can be really complicated. So complicated that many people actually decide not to travel when they suffer from severe anxiety or panic attacks. And that doesn't need to be. So stay today because we are going to talk about some tips that I have found very useful for you to travel more comfortably. This is Carmen Roman. I am a clinical psychologist and I am here to bring you the beautiful news of mental health. Let's start. Living in harmony is possible if you know your emotions and how to handle them. I am Dr. Carmen Roman and I will share with you the current psychology by myself or by interviewing experts who will inspire you. Learn how to live a life of fullness and how to recover your emotional harmony. Welcome to Emotions in Harmony. Welcome back and thank you for being here. If you know somebody who experienced anxiety or maybe you experience anxiety yourself, you may already have realized how difficult it is to travel with anxiety. And here are some tips that I hope are really helpful for your next travel. Let's get out of home. Let's have fun. Why not? <laughs> Actually, I was thinking about this topic because I am myself leaving tomorrow for vacation with the family. And oh my God, the stress can accumulate. And the, I don't know why so many things get packed before travel. Yeah, so so many things to do, etc. And I was thinking... I have often this conversation with my clients when they are going to travel and when they come back. It's incredible how the mind of a person with anxiety can spiral. Yeah. And so it's mine too. So let's dive in together. First, it's important that you prepare for many days in advance. And let me tell you what it was helpful for me this past trip. I started like three, four weeks ago. I don't know how many weeks ago. Every day I wanted to do something small for the planning, like arranging the Airbnb or um, arranging the car, the transportation, or talking to that particular family member or that particular family member or arranging the food. You don't need to organize all at once. You can take it slowly and organize one thing at a time. We forget so easily, don't we? And it's normal. It's part of the human experience. Well, if you follow me for these years, you know how much I love technology. And this is why we are so grateful for key reminders to be our sponsor. It will help you to be so precise in reminding your client that needs to come and see you, that needs to show up, that is important. And you know what? In your reminders, you can customize and customize and customize until your heart is content. <laughs> so go to greminders.com slash harmony and learn about this amazing tool. Also, uh, now we have these beautiful tools. You can actually go to the place that you are traveling most unless you are going to a place that Google has not been. You can, you know, get this little guy walking in the streets and get to enjoy the place, get to know the place that you are going. If you are going to some new place, if you are going to a familiar place, well, you already may have walked all around that area. Enjoy the ride. Why not? Look YouTube videos, get informed, the history maybe of the place. And this is the trick. The more information you have, not to the point to give yourself exhaustion, no, healthy amount of information, the less likely your brain is going to get anxious because anxiety sometimes comes from not knowing. So you give your brain that pieces of information so it doesn't need to invent how the place is and how horrible and ugly is going to be the experience because this is what the brain does. Yeah, actually. If you notice yourself that you are having these catastrophic thoughts, remind yourself very gently, slowly, that actually you don't know. Let's put an example. What about if there is not good transportation? You don't know until you are there. And if you already traveled before, well, you know and you may prevent something. So doubt 
your catastrophic thoughts. Don't just give them full credit. It's not worth it. So our brain gets irritated because it doesn't, it's very uncomfortable not to know. So calm down, breathe and tell it's okay not to know. Another very useful tip is to manage your time. For the entire trip, you may need to allow extra time for you to arrive to places, to leave places, to even take a shower. Think about it. When somebody is in crutches because they broke their leg, they hopefully give themselves time, extra time to everything. They know it's going to be very slow to get to the car and get out of the car and get to the place they are going. And people trying to be mindful when somebody is walking with a broken leg. Some people trying even to be helpful. Yeah. Well, the secret here is to think yourself that you need that extra time. There is nothing broken with you. At least there is nothing that others can see. But there is an extreme need for self-care. Yes, anxiety is your bell that is telling you you actually went too fast at some point in your life. And now you are paying the price for that. Even because of life, because of personality or whatever, doesn't matter. You kind of over limit yourself. So now you need to give extra time. And that's okay. Whether others understand or no, it's up to them for now. Yeah, let's put them aside that for now. Don't try to meet anybody's expectations. Actually, if somebody in the group that you are traveling with or in the family members or someone that is nearby had experienced anxiety, will totally understand that you are moving slowly. Get that extra time and create this wonderful compassionate environment for yourself. Also, protect yourself from getting overstimulated. For instance, maybe it's too much light in the airplane or in the place that you are going. So bring your eye mask and you can use for a couple minutes, close your eyes and be in the dark. If you can, whenever you can. Covering your eyes will eliminate the extra stimuli that you probably don't need that extra stimuli. So, closing your eyes for a moment. Bring earplugs. Why not? You can isolate yourself from the environment noise. Yeah. You can isolate yourself completely when you have your earplugs and your mask. Safely. Yeah. Safely. You want to do it when you actually are in your hotel room or in the airplane or something that you can do it safely. I always tell the teenagers, don't isolate yourself when you are walking in the street. Don't get focused on your phone. It's important that you learn to entertain yourself without electronics or without a book or without something. Learn to live with a minimum. And you may have the means to have all of it. You may have the means to pay for, I don't know, Wi-Fi in the airplane. You may have the means to always have electronics with you. That's okay, but that's not the point. The point is, if you learn to not need them, you are going to be less anxious if something happens because you learn to entertain yourself. And here, my dear friend, get curiosity. If you are in the airplane and you are without battery in your electronics or you forgot that cable or something happened, you can Create, be creative and start inventing stories about other people in the airplane or observe or enjoy. Yeah, it's very enjoyable to be around in the airport. Enjoy the journey. It's not only the end point of your journey. I love airports. I don't know why, but I love airports. It's my favorite place. So I can See many people, different races, ethnicities, you know, makeup stories. I don't know. It's really fun. <laughs> Get to entertain yourself so you don't need to go to that panic mode because something was out of your control. Also, 
book time between your flights if you are flying when you move through one plane to another i don't want to see you running in the airport that's not healthy for an anxious person book plenty of time that you can just walk take a drink and wash i don't know see the chops etc read whatever doesn't matter it will take you longer but you will arrive with sanity and never Never, this is my favorite thing in the world, never be shy about taking a nap. <laughs> Because napping will actually reset your whole body and you will be refreshed. Or take time to do your exercises, your stretches, your yoga, whatever. Always when you travel, put that time for yourself. And others are going to be very grateful because you will be in better humor. Always do yoga or meditate. Make time to meditate. Three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. You can also close your eyes in the airplane and meditate for as long as you want. And make time for your spiritual practice. And you know, these actually are very healthy habits. If you take these ten minutes to read about something that you believe in, or to listen to, I don't know, a person that you like, a spiritual person, whatever you need to feed your soul, then you are going to be better physically and emotionally. Consider this. Change is exciting. The point of traveling is that we want to accumulate new experiences. Yeah. And this is good for our health. This is good for resilience. This stretch of our mind, knowing somebody else's food, how they live, how they move, how their day, everyday life is, is part of humans. We want to know that. So don't close yourself in the feelings about your anxiety. Get actually, again, curiosity about people, places, how they eat. Change is exciting. Change of the type of food that you eat is okay. If you go to Guatemala or El Salvador or China or Japan, you don't need to eat the same American food you have here. Get brave to experience. You don't need to eat the whole plate, but always make room for new experiences. Isn't that fun? So when you make this space in your brain and you say, ah, uh, I am out of home, and this is what we do when we are out of home, we eat that particular food or we eat not my particular food, we eat something new or we try or whatever. That said, my dear friend, it's perfectly okay if you want to like sneak in your little favorite tea bag or your little candy that you want. And you know why? Because if you are trying new foods, new experiences, new something, and you have a little bit of the very familiar, it's a good combination. Yeah? Your pillow or that toy that you sleep with or whatever, whatever is that makes very familiar, your favorite blanket, whatever is important that you can bring that makes familiar. And when you feel anxious, you can be with that familiar item or drink that familiar tea, or that familiar drink, or whatever. Take healthy risk. If you want to experience something new, like sports, for example, maybe you don't want to go to extreme sport, but you want to do something new for you. Remember, the correct amount of stimuli is good. Let's move on to the topic of your meds. If you are in your meds, because of anxiety or depression or panic attacks. Be sure that you tell your psychiatrist that you are traveling and that you have enough for the amount of your travel, that you don't need to worry about refills or something else if you need them in an emergency situation. So that's something that you really need to plan. And as I'm talking to you, all this conversation with one of my clients when they are traveling are coming to my mind. And you know what? doesn't matter how much anxious or uh, 95% the things that we fear is never going to happen, yeah? Or you are going to solve it if something happened differently and more beautifully than your brain is telling you. But most of the time, when my clients come back from vacation or from the, those kind of trips that are relaxing trips, they are very grateful that they went. And they usually come with less anxiety. They conquer 
something. So I suggest, I seriously suggest, traveling with the appropriate accommodations will make you stronger. Be patient with yourself. It's really good that you decided to travel. The more you travel, the more comfortable you get. The more familiar you get with the unknown. So get there and travel. Now, let's talk about something that will actually help you to manage your thoughts. There are situations that mimic an anxiety attack, but they are only a copy of an anxiety attack. So they are not definitely an anxiety attack. And if you identify those situations, you can relax. For example, a change in your diet, it will also change the chemistry of your body. So you may start breathing faster or less. When you are hiking up in the mountain, for example, the change on the pressure, it will actually change your breathing. Yeah, I'm going to list all of these things and then I'm going to tell you what to do. Alcohol consumption. Please don't mix alcohol with flying or driving. You don't need that. Not with anxiety. Any fast change on your body temperature. Like you enter a very cold building or a very hot area or a hot top in the jacuzzi. All of these fast changes. Everything that simulates a fast change in your breathing, your brain may think that is anxiety coming again. May identify it as such. No, it's not. So you need to cut quickly that. And you need to say, hmm. I only need a minute. I only need a minute. It will take me a minute to recover. So you just deep breathe through your nose, not using your mouth, through your nose all the way to your stomach. By the time you count 10 deep breathings, you probably will be better off. And it was false alarm. <laughs> yeah, Nothing happened. It was just a change in your body. Lastly, I want you to remember this. Do not listen to me. Do not expect others to advocate for you. It's nobody's job to take care of you because you have anxiety. It's beautiful if they are considerate and compassionate and helpful, yeah? But it's nobody's job. It's your job to advocate for yourself, to let people know how you feel and what you need, and listen to me, asking doesn't mean receiving. So it's up to you to follow up or to accommodate appropriately. It's not that the world needs to cater a better experience for you. No, it's not. It doesn't work that way. Because you will go on life thinking, life is so unfair. Why me? Why they delay the fly? It's against me. The airline hates me. No, it's not. Is life. And this is why you sign up for traveling, because you want those experiences. So remember, the point is you get stronger. And no, 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 no. You don't want the bad experiences, but you want the different. Enjoy the different. And if you can do something, go ahead and do something. If you cannot control the situation, just be patient. Do not impose your special needs on anybody. There is nothing more difficult than an anxious person that are also needy. So when you take care of yourself and you go, if you are listening right now and you go back and check everything that you are doing for your anxiety, you will be more in control actually and you will be more open to experiences. You will be happier. You will be more creative. You will be more loving and less irritable. Isn't that beautiful? So... Yes, of course, we need to be positive and think that people is willing to help. But how they can help if we don't communicate what we need? And even if we communicate, it's not their job, remember. Everybody does the best they can. Wow, <laughs> this is a very beautiful topic. I hope you enjoy your next travel and... I am going to let you go because I have an airplane to catch tomorrow. Okay, bye for now.
we have reached the end of another episode of the podcast Emotions in Harmony. See you the next week. Visit www.emotionsinharmony.org where you can subscribe, find the notes, and be in direct contact with me. Thanks for listening.